we're going to learn a lot about Notre Dame. Do I expect them to beat Stanford? Yeah. Would I be shocked if Stanford won this game? Absolutely. It's not so much about that. It's about can you dominate the way you're supposed to dominate, which means building on what you've done the last three weeks. That's going to be the big part of this. And being able to to thrive in the areas where you have the matchup advantage and then eliminate the areas where maybe you don't is going to be Mm -hmm. a big, big key to say how much growth has this football team showed. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I mean, we talk about get right games all the time, right? Like for me, this is a get righter game, right? Like yeah. Notre Dame has been trending. A jump game. Yeah, yeah, it really jump is. Game. I mean, it, it, it's something where like, hey, Notre Dame has been trending pretty good the last couple of games, especially offensively. Now let's make sure that that's not a little bit of a fluke, right? Like let's hit that and then take it to an even higher level. So we'll call it get righter. We'll call it whatever we want. This is a big opportunity for Notre Dame to ride momentum but then take that momentum to an, a, a level up, right? Like this is a level up opportunity, I think, for Notre Dame. So I agree with you. I think that this is a massive opportunity. We're going to hyper-focus on the offense, of course, from a fan base perspective because that's what has been kind of surging the last couple of weeks. But the team as a whole has an opportunity to really kind of hit a different level this weekend. So it's, it should be an exciting game. I feel like with some people, they just can't enjoy a good thing, right? Yeah. Or, or even enjoy a, a thing that was good but can be better. And so in, when you look at it, it's kind of funny. It's like now this week on our board and with my friends that are calling because Notre Dame's had two pretty good games in a row offensively. Not perfect, but but much better, especially relative to what they've been. And when you think about it's going to be by Saturday, Ryan, we're talking about it being October 15th. That's going to be almost a month since Notre Dame has played a home game. Yep. Last home game was September 17th against Cal. And to think how far that, you know, what they looked like last time they were home, you know, against a Pac-12 opponent, right, from the Bay Area. And so then you look at it and you say, you know, offense is getting better. So now there's this reaction to the defense that I think is a little bit like, whoa, okay, timeout. We're, we've lost sight of the areas that need to improve. And now we're jumping into territory that's eh, not not where it is. And so it, it is interesting, but the thing, the the reason behind that is right. So I'm going to push back against some of that stuff, but here's why this game is important because Notre Dame has yet to put the game a game together where both units kind of really thrive for the majority of the game. The defense played great for three and a half, two and a half quarters against North Carolina. They built up a big lead. That was the closest we've seen to this team playing a complete game. And then, of course, they let Carolina in late. Then the offense fumbles into the end zone. They miss a fourth and one in the second half with multiple chances to just make that a 60-something to 17 game, right? So, you know, that's kind of what we're complaining about, right? Like they only beat 5-1 and one North Carolina on the road by 13 and let them get back in the game. Not even get back in the game late. Let them get a garbage touchdown to turn a, t- a three-touch score game into a two-score game, right? With, what, a minute left? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's things that is a that it, but, but, but I'm actually okay with that from fans. Like I'm actually, you know what I, as I thought, I'm okay with it. Cause I'm, I'm glad fans aren't just, again, what was always the criticism of Brian Kelly? Stop lowering the standard. Right. Right. And so we're going to still hold the same standard, but then just understand what the process is to get there. And what are the areas that they are there? What are the areas where maybe they're not there? And then how does that relate to the Stanford game? Cause I think, when you look at St- – Ryan, you and I have watched a lot of film last few days, and and mm-hmm. it, this is a team that you need to be able to go out and say, oh, this is the kind of game where if your team is ascending and, – and I, I wouldn't say it was a fluke. I don't know if that's not the word I would use if the last two games were a fluke because they weren't. You beat two really good teams in a row, but more right. of a – you have to avoid the step back. That's mm-hmm. really the way I look at it, and I think we're kind of saying the same thing there. You can't take a step back. You've had mm-hmm. this. You've 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 ascended. You beat a quality Cal team in an ugly win. You had a really convincing win over North Carolina. You were convincingly better than BYU outside of about a quarter. I mean, if we're being honest, like middle of the second quarter, the middle or third quarter, the middle of the fourth quarter is about the only time BYU was even competitive in that game, really. Yep. And and say okay, but stop that. Right. Stop those periods. Right. Like and this is the cut now against Carolina and BYU. It's a little tougher because those are better teams. Those are good football teams. Stanford's not. And so now is when we really see, OK, are they able to separate themselves from the cows and the marshals, which is where they weren't in September? They let inferior opponents hang around. Have they grown to the point now where it's like, OK, we respect you. You're a rival. You can you have some things that, that give us problems, but sorry, we're we have a plan for that and we're gonna dominate you the way that we're supposed to. And I think